Hi, it's Brittany from Imperium. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to make the Moon Dance notepad cover. Notepad or notebook cover. I keep forgetting, but it's awesome. Um, so I've made a couple. <laughs> I am prepping for some events, so you can see I've got like I've been I've been I've been working hard, but uh it's fun, okay. Um I have two others that I recently made, but this is like what I've sewn in the last two days. So this is the one we're gonna sew in this video. Look at it. So uh this is Rainbow Critical Rose Vinyl from Warmino, and I gotta be honest, I bought it a long time ago. Uh, I don't think any is available right now. I'm pretty sure none's available, um, but she runs it frequently. And then the silver is the Disco Ball Ace Glitter Vinyl from Warmino, and it is currently as of right now available and I think it's going to be available a lot. I used my unicorn mane thread from Wizardry Stitchery and my amazingly printed cork labels from Heartwood and Hyde. Um, so it's really fun. Oh yeah, this pattern is from Sincerely Jen Patterns. Jenny is amazing. Um, I've had the pleasure of getting to hang out with her in person and so fun. Can't wait until the next time. You should definitely check out her other patterns. She's got a lot of fun ones. Um, but yeah, so we're not going to go over, um, cutting it out, but I do go over like the different pieces. Uh, it's a, it's a quick sew. What I do want to do is I want to edge coat them. I have not done that yet, uh, because my shows are the, like literally this weekend. So, um, I'm going to Whatever doesn't sell, I'm going to edge paint. So I do like edge painting, but I'll just show you real quick. So this one, this one, oh, I found some uh, notepads on Amazon too that are colored. So I'll have links to those. Ooh, this is an old Mormino vinyl and it glows in the dark. Oh yeah, and uh, you can put a business card in here. So there's mine. Look how cute they are. Okay, anyways. Um... We've got, ooh, oh, this one is so good. Wanted to keep it. I'm not, I can't, I can't keep everything. Go space, some dice. This is Imperium Pink Glitter from Marino, okay? And the last one. Um, so, yeah, enjoy, have fun. I hope you make a million also, because I will be making a million more. Hi, and so I forgot to say something, Brittany. Um, so I was asked a couple times to make this um, little video, but what I'm going to do very soon, as soon as I have a chance, is I'm going to make a video for the fabric hack as well. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I know how to do it. Um, I fabric hack the purse pet all the time, and that's basically what I'm going to do. So I'm really excited. I'm hoping maybe next week. Sometime in the next couple weeks I will have that up. So be on the lookout for it. Okay, so instead of doing a cutting portion, I'm just going to go over all of the pieces and where I interface them and with what. Um, because this pattern is mostly measurements, even though Jenny gives full pattern pieces for everything. Um, so this is a junior legal pad size. It's five by eight inches. I got a whole pack on Amazon. I'm going to use one of my uh, cork labels from Heartwood and Hyde. And then we have the main body piece and our stabilizers. So these are Decaville heavy. And then I marked out where they should be when I pressed them. Um, one thing to keep in mind, some vinyls shrink when you heat press them. And I've been kind of running into that with this piece on some of these. So keep that in mind. 
so you've got your two main lining pieces and one of them is going to get the smaller piece of stabilizer and there's a marking in the pattern to put that down at. And then you have this piece that goes on the inside as well. And then this piece is like the business card holder. And on that, I put my name label. And then you've got this piece that that goes on to. Sorry, I'm not looking at the pattern pieces, so I'm not saying the actual names. Um, but anyways, so these go in here. George was nowhere to be found until I started recording. <sighs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere my name tag. And this is the spot I like putting it in. You don't have to put it here. Um, I am going to just backstitch at the start and stop to um, sew this on because I don't want to knot the threads because this part is going to be wrong. So I'm just going to sew this on and like I said I'm back stitching at the start and stop and when I put these on I will lift my presser foot and look where the needle is going to drop and adjust my material a little bit if I need to. And that's how I get pretty good results. On these. I've been batch sewing a lot, so I've got clips everywhere and whatnot. Everything's just flying around. Okay, so there is that. Then this goes on here. And I kind of just eyeball it to see where I want it. Um, there's like, okay, there was a fuzz. Um, I try to, well, I line it up evenly on these sides, obviously, but this doesn't line up with anything so kind of just put it about there and you can't tape it down because you're gonna sew it and then this has to be open so I kind of just try to hold it as best I can slide it into place and make sure that after I do my back stitch it's still where I want it to be. And sorry if I get my head in the frame at all. I'm just trying to make sure it's on the right. So same thing when I'm sewing these on. I'm just kind of adjusting my needle where it's going to drop as needed. And I'm back stitching because, again, this is going to be a raw spot. And then I like to just singe my threads if needed. Okay. Now, this goes on a lining piece, not the one with the stabilizer. You want the one without the stabilizer. Yes, sir. You can sit there as long as you stay there. Um, so, again gonna kind of eyeball it. I like to try, that's big yawn George, I like to try to have it even on each side here. And like this vinyl is really slippery so I'll slide it over, line it up. George, they don't need to know that it's 2.30 in the morning. Now you've told them. He says I'm ready for bed mom. Okay, let's see. I think we're good to go. Like I said, I like to get a little back stitch there and then check. Also, this is how I sew all the time. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my lines straight. 
if you've ever seen me sew something crooked, there's a good chance it was because George wouldn't move. Okay, you're done. Sorry. Thank you, bud. On the construction of these two pieces, if you wanted to pull your threads back, you could do so and knot them off because this is not going to show. Um, but I just, I just backstitch everything on this pattern and that's part of why I enjoy making it because it comes together so quickly that way. So for this, um, there is a measurement in the pattern. To mark your line. Um, I don't think I have been using it exactly. I think I've just been doing like an inch uh, and it's been working. But I start that hole with my seam ripper and then I switch to scissors. You could, um, while you're prepping this, uh, cut this whole piece at your cutting mat with a ruler and a rotary cutter. That's probably what I should have done. Uh, but it's fine. Uh, mine usually does not come out perfect, but uh, I'm going to be real honest. The notebook is going to cover it. <laughs> so I'm trying not to stress about it. Uh, this center piece, I like taking a piece of tape double side tape and putting that on there. Take the backing off. And then if your print is directional, you're going to want to make sure it is going in the right direction. I like this side better, so I'm going to make sure that's my front. So this is my top. Okay, so top. And then if this print matters you're gonna want to pay attention to that as well and just gonna center that in there press it down so the tape sticks and then on the left side so again this is our top on the left side we're going to line this up to the edges and clip it down. I am really loving this vinyl combo. Okay, and then the side with your stabilizer and your slit, you're going to put on the right and you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that the opening is at the top Ask me how I know. Please don't. It's embarrassing. Okay, I'll tell you. I started sewing one on upside down earlier. It's like real early in the morning. Um, but I noticed like 10 stitches in. So there's that. That was good. Uh, now, like I said, I've been running into this piece shrinking some. It looks like this vinyl did just fine. But I've been kind of adjusting it as best I can. And then uh, when you're done with sewing this anyways, you can go through and uh, trim up your edges as well. So it's not a huge deal, but um, so there's a tiny gap there. But I've been running into having a gap right here, maybe like an eighth of an inch. So it's nothing crazy, but I've just been, when I get here, sewing in at a fourth of an inch so that once I get here... I'm at an eighth of an inch on my top vinyl, and then I can just go ahead and trim that down. But once we have this all together, and we're like, yes, this is right, we're going to stitch all the way around the perimeter. So everything we're sewing is like an eighth of an inch. It's like a, a top stitch, if you will. Again, lining up 
my edges, corners. Okay, and you can kind of like slide your vinyl a little bit if it has any sort of stretch to it to try to get it all to line up. And you want to make sure that this piece is flat. You want everything to be flat so that this piece doesn't like bubble on you when you fold it up. Sometimes it takes me a second, but I, it's so worth it taking your time in those spots. So we're gonna trim all these threads and then you still have this sewn open. I do believe in the pattern she has you sew a full box. I like to backstitch, backstitch, lift my needle, backstitch, backstitch, and then trim. Uh, it's just, it's my preference. You can do it either way. There really isn't a right or a wrong. So lifting my needle and just going over and then this is like a jump stitch and I'll just trim that. trimming my threads and then I like to take my lighter on those spots that I trimmed my threads so I'll fold it each way and I'm really just barely touching it um another thing I noticed so there's like little pieces of like fuzz so I'm just gonna singe those down too okay so if you have any pieces where your vinyl sticks out on one side or the other you can use scissors to trim them or you can go to your cutting mat and use a ruler and a rotary cutter. Um, I will say when I batch cut this uh, most recent set of Moon Dance that I did, um, I just went off the measurements on the pattern and used my rotary cutter and ruler. And I found it much easier because I have a hard time with paper pattern pieces uh, cutting straight with them. And also, um, I just tend to shave off a little of the pattern as I go. Uh, but you're going to take the board to your notepad and put it in the slit that you made. And if it isn't big enough, you're going to have to cut it down a little bit. Well, look at that. There you go. 
that is it. Um, some things you could do is you could sew like elastic here and here so that it folds over. Um, I would like to do that. Or you could, or you could also, uh, put some elastic here so that you could put like a pen in, but, um, technically you could put a pen in here. So it's okay. Um, I think some people have maybe put like elastic loops on the outside too. You can play with it. It's, it's a fun pattern. Um, I'm really enjoying making them and I hope they sell well at my shows. I love this one. Uh, the problem is I want to keep them all. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. Um, I know it wasn't very in depth or anything, but it's such a fun quick make. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.